I was running a filling station on I-80 in Shelton, Nebraska. And I looked up one day, and here was a Winnebago motor home. It was just covered with scripture. Every inch of it had scripture on it. And I thought, oh, it's a band of hippies. And I was relieved to find out it was just one man, 49 years old, and he was headed west. He kept saying the starter kept trying to engage as he's coming up the interstate. He said, well, I gotta find a junkyard. He thought he'd only be there a half hour. And I said, well, there's one at the next intersection. My name is Leonard Knight, and I made this mountain 22 years here, and I'd love to give you a tour of it. There's a man-made mountain in California called Salvation Mountain. The mountain is a sculpture, the vision of one man, built by one man, Leonard Knight. It's also a testament to his faith, his holy vision. Where the air is dry and the sun burns hot, Leonard Knight's Salvation Mountain is built in Southeast California. The hillside visionary environment is built mostly of hay bale construction and covered with adobe clay. Knight used thousands of gallons of donated paint to coat his candy-colored mountain that took almost 30 years of his life to create. In 2002, Salvation Mountain was considered a unique national treasure. But before building a mountain in California, he tried the skies of Nebraska. Dad and Leonard met, it was a morning. I'll never forget it, he came in on this little moped, long skinny guy. He walked in the back door of my dad's shop and he, he said he needed some parts. That's how the friendship was born. Leonard didn't have any money, but dad tried to help him out the best he could. He just stuck around. My name is Hal Jones. My dad was Copy Jones, a friend of Leonard Knight. Dad got that nickname when he was about five years old. He lost his leg, and the nurses up there bought a get well gift. It was a police hat, and they just called him Copy from then on, and it just stuck. He was a self-taught mechanic, blacksmith, welder, you name it, Dad could do it. Before Marie Guy passed in 2016, she shared her memories of Leonard in a phone interview. Getting back to Leonard, he parked his little bus out back of my station. Well, he was just really kind of a pleasant guy to have around. We had some very deep discussions. His goal in life was to get the Word of God out. Hadn't thought about Leonard for several years, but his memories linger on. He had a dream to um, become a preacher, but the way he was going about it was a different way. When you asked him what he did for a living or you asked him what he was, and he, he said, I'm an evangelist. Leonard's vehicle he was driving was a piece of art. It was a Dodge mid-70s van with a raised roof, white background paint, red lettering. It said, Jesus saves, God is love, the sinner's prayer written on the side of it. It was unique. It was, it was something you wouldn't see. I mean, we didn't have internet or anything like that. You just didn't see stuff like that. Then he got the idea one day that he bet if he had a big hot air balloon with scripture on it, that just maybe that would work. Are you on now? Uh, this story starts back in 1970 in Burlington, Vermont, approximately 20 years ago. I saw a hot air balloon going over the main street and uh, kids were pulling their parents out of the stores, having them look at the balloon. And they were saying, Daddy, what does the balloon say? I just wished it said God was love on it. There could have been a two or 3,000 people looking up saying God is love. And Dad bought into Leonard's story. Dad believed him. Dad wanted to see that dream of his come true because you could see the fire in Leonard's eyes. And that was Leonard's purpose was to tell God's story. As soon as you did something like that back then, you were, you were crazy, you were deemed nuts. And Dad found a, a balloon factory in South Dakota. And that's the only way they were gonna get this balloon made was either buy enough yardage of fabric to make it themselves or buy the scraps. They loaded up my dad's pickup and shut down the shop for four or five days. And the way they went, 
come back with a pick up full boxes of pallets of nylon scraps from that balloon place. Once they got home, Leonard took the scraps, he starts laying them out, and he started sewing that thing together with a, with a sewing machine. These, these scraps and making the letters. And by the time they got done with it, it wasn't perfect, but it got the job done. And I broke down in 1980 in uh, Shelton, Nebraska. And I was gonna stay two hours. And the people treated me nice, and I stayed four years and cut cotton wood and drove a corn truck and met hundreds of nice people in Nebraska. And they all kind of helped me build the balloon. And I sewed it with a sewing machine from scratch and had a lot of fun doing it. And he would sew and sew and sew, and I don't know how many thousands of yards of thread he said he used setting out behind my station. The newspaper in Kearney got a hold of his story and they had it on the front page of their paper and they likened it to a whale in a harlequin suit. Two photographs showing the inflated balloon behind Max and Marie Gee's interstate service station have been found. And several articles appeared in Nebraska newspapers. A video showing Leonard trying to inflate his balloon in the California Sonoran Desert was shot after he left Nebraska. Leonard never intended to take it for a ride. Instead, he wanted to raise it high into the air to spread the message that God is love, which he sewed in big letters on the balloon. <laughs> when you used scraps, you used everything you had. And he had a dream. He just kept going until he had all the scraps put together. Dad was the first one that ever gave him the chance or the opportunity. And even then, the, the money to get the balloon, Dad made him do stuff around the shop. The car that I still have from when I was 16, Dad had him do the body work and paint that car to get the money to go get the scraps of balloon stuff. He would work out back, and he would wait on customers, and he was always pleasant. He was always happy. It was really a comfort to me to have someone else with me at that interstate interchange, because it got pretty scary at times. I always said he was on a low budget. He didn't get too interested in really staying with anything because he had this balloon and God on his mind and he was going to fulfill it regardless. Leonard would survive by um, generosity. He never begged. People would see a need and they'd, they'd pick it up. And he might have a few bucks in his pocket, but somebody would pick up his tab. I was out here one year in 1979 and I liked the weather. And I always wanted to get back here when it snowed a lot in Nebraska. But people in Nebraska treated me awful good, too. Right? Good memories. And uh, I guess I got a thousand good memories. Leonard had spent several years in central Nebraska sewing his hot air balloon after he rolled into the interstate filling station in 1980. With very little notice, Leonard packed up his balloon and in the fall of 1984, headed west. He just headed for California. Well, he just came in and thanked us for all of our hospitality. Remember, Copy Jones was worried about him. <laughs> to put this vision from his head to fabric, from scraps to sewing machine, it took a lot of talent to do what he did. Even artists have called him artistic, and he just laughed. He says, well, if you call making a lump of clay and running your fist into it and then painting it an artist, He's, I guess I'm an artist. <laughs> I feel very privileged that I, I can do this. Leonard had a dream, like the rest of us. We've all had dreams of doing things and accomplishing things. And sometimes those dreams kind of go by the wayside. And I think maybe he gave up on the dream of balloons. And he went to California and done something bigger and better where more people could see it. And uh, I never did get the balloon up, although I tried hundreds of times in Nebraska, probably 40 times in South Dakota, and I never got the balloon up in, uh, because I didn't have the right heat in the propane bottle. Out here, I had the propane bottles and the people loving me, 
but it got too rotten and it was, it ripped easy. I'm glad about now because if it didn't have rotten out, I might not have put this uh, adobe hill up here. So this is why the hill is up here, it had the same message and it seems like everybody loves me. And uh, I'm excited about this mountain because I can have Catholics, Baptists, people who love God, people who don't, black and white, and they all seem to love me and give me a compliment. And uh, I think love is like a snowball going downhill. If they treat me good, I want to treat them good. And in town, when I go in the restaurant, I want to check my mouth to make sure I'm as good as they are. And the better I try to be, the better they are. It's a beautiful thing. God, I wouldn't want to trade this place for any place in the whole world. Leonard never sought attention, but with his many attempts to send his message into the skies and his three-story tall and 100-foot-long mountain adorned with a cross, Leonard became a celebrity of sorts. He's been featured in numerous newspapers, magazines, videos, and films. Salvation Mountain is a destination and a pilgrimage for thousands each year and is maintained by Salvation Mountain, a nonprofit organization which continues to fight for preservation and ownership of the land. Put the camera where you think it should show that God is loved real good. In With declining sense. health, Leonard Knight entered a nursing home in 2012, never to work on his mountain again, only to visit on rare occasions. Leonard passed away February 10, 2014, at the age of 82. If all the people in Nebraska can see this, and uh, I just hope it really gets up. I have one thing. I appreciate everybody in the past. God bless you.